Hello everybody, welcome back to Rox TV, this fully bilingual YouTube channel to inspire your power. I am your host, Roxana Frontini for CB Rocks, and I am so excited to be here today with Patti Fuensalida from Coral Gables Hypnosis. She is an amazing, amazing human being, mindset coach, super powerful woman. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you. This series of talks are so meaningful to me, Patti, because they're all related to the outstanding capacity that human beings have to transcend fear. It's like the only thing that we're really here trying to do, right? So I'm right there with you. I think it's the most important thing that we have in front of us. Yes, and I think it's so powerful to, to develop that muscle. That's why I wanted you here in the channel to share with all of us, you know, more about, I think the more we comprehend something, the, the less fearful we are about trying to change it. Exactly, yeah. and, and that's, at least I can speak for me, for myself, I was so ignorant of the ways that fear worked that I was a prisoner of it for many years. And although I kept taking action, either I took less action that I could mm -hmm. or took the actions in such state of fear that started feeling it in the body right. later. So let's talk about that since you helped so many people. I would say you help them express their full potential because they already have. I mean, we all already have. We all have it. I think we're all born innately with a path, right? Like whatever that path is, right? Whether it's, you know, I want to build a family and I want to create a beautiful environment for the people around me or whether it's like I literally want to save the whales or people or whatever. I think that we all have this highest potential and most of us are not really living there. And it's because of what you said. It's because of fear. We're afraid of something, right? I know that personally for me, um, I grew up with a ton of fear, a ton. Like, you know, little micro traumatic events that I've had in childhood added up to a giant amount of fear that manifested in me through like tics and a lot of anxiety and nervousness and an inability to communicate. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating to be in a situation where you're like, okay, I want that, but I physically, emotionally, mentally can't push myself to be in that situation. So pushing ourselves through is what you said, it's overcoming the fear, right? But I think that when we set the goal of, like, I wanna be free from fear, like, it's too big. You know, so a lot of us will shrink to that because is there a way to actually be completely free I don't know. I think we can become aware of the fear and act in spite of it. Yeah. But truly being like, I'm done with fear, like that's not a thing. Like human, like the human experience is is comes with fear installed. Yeah, right? absolutely. And I think it's so funny because actually the the song, my latest song that inspired all of this series of free free from fear mm -hmm. related content. Um, has a lot to do with that. I, I wanted to I wanted to have a song and I wanted to share a song that like for those moments where you're totally trapped in it, you can sing that you are free from it. And that's it's the key. It's in that step. moment, right? Exactly. Because overcoming fear is overcoming it now. And then overcoming it now. And it's not saying like I'm never gonna be afraid of trying something new. Because that's not a thing. Like exactly what, what you know. Right, like, I don't know what's gonna happen. It's like, I've been an artist, jumping on stage, being an artist since I was seven, jumping on stage since I was like 13, yeah, 13 years old. Every time I jump on stage, I feel it. Something, yeah. But it's just getting present and transcending that fear or sometimes recognizing that it's not fear, it's excitement. Right, or nervousness. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I think that the, the first step, and you and I went through the process, right? So you're kind of having an insight as to how this works. But one of the things that has, that really helped me and it's part of how I've implemented it with my clients is being able to stop for a second and just recognize, okay, what is it that I'm feeling right now? Labeling it, right? We're multi-bodied people. We have emotions, we have physical sensation, you know, we have minds and all these things acting at the same time within a specific experience, mm -hmm. right? 
So if in that experience you you get the message from the body that maybe you get really hot or maybe your heart starts doing this, like okay, let me pause for a second because the body is trying to like knock on the door and be like, hey, can you pay attention to this thing because I want you to listen to this. If you stop, you pay attention. You're like, oh, what is this? Okay, I'm afraid. Awesome. Like, what's the actual thought behind this? What is it that I'm afraid of? I'm afraid I'm gonna look like a fool. Okay. Now I have something to handle, right? Like I have a goal and I know, okay, this is the problem. This is how I can get past it. But if you're just like, I don't know, I'm freaking out. What do you do with that? Sorry. What do you do with that? It's too big, right? Like you can't swallow all of that. It's too, too much. But if you break it down into like, all right, my heart's palpitating. I'm starting to feel a little bit hot and I'm afraid I'm going to make a fool of myself. Okay, I can take a step back, right? Well, these people are here because they support me, right? Or this situation has pre presented itself because maybe I'm ready to expand a little bit. Or maybe I'm ready to push myself, right? So you can have a little bit more of a rational conversation. And obviously this doesn't work if you do it like that one time right before you go on stage, right? <laughs> like that's because like we're, we're not gonna wait until, you know, we're gonna go speak in front of 3,000 people when we're like, okay, let me have a conversation with my head because you're not used to it, right? Yeah. But it's about being able to recognize your emotional cues and your physical cues all the time throughout every day so that when that moment comes you already have a muscle memory of like oh when i feel like this i pause i reframe i think about something else i have an anchor that i go back to right so you can create all these things what could be an anchor um you can use different things right so for some people it'll be you know tapping they'll tap your finger for me i have my favorite anchor in the whole world it's like find your happiest memory okay right so and a lot of people will, will take a back, take a look back, and they'll say, mm, "I don't really have a happy memory." You know, make one up. Make one up. Make exactly. one up. Your brain, your body, literally have no idea what's going on. So tell it that this is what's going on, right? So like my anchor, when I was seventeen, I went um, on a motorcycle ride with some friends in Chile, and I remember riding in the back of the motorcycle, and there was this field of yellow flowers, like up a hill, kind of like oh, like very picturesque. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta pull over. We, you know, they let me off the bike, and I went up the thing, and I'm like, there's just yellow flowers, and I'm like, man, the best. So to me, that's a super clear moment okay. in my head that I have come back to for you know 20, 30 years over and over again. So my body already has a physical sensation attached to flowers, to yellow, to chili, to riding a motorcycle. So all exactly. of these cues that are part of that memory are now anchors to me. So before I have to do something where Maybe my body feels a little bit like, oh, this is weird, I don't want to do it. Freaking up, right? If it starts like sending me the signals of like, I'm uncomfortable, I'll stop for a second of it, all right? Let me go back to the field of flowers. And I connect with the memory until I feel the shift in the body, and then I go about my day. Now I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Exactly. So it's, for me, it's like this. But you gotta start somewhere. Absolutely. So by then, that's my favorite anchor. Of happy memory. A happy, it doesn't have to be happy necessarily, but or something just, that pulls you out of the body uh, okay. and that has a physical reaction in your body. Okay. So that it's like training our ability to shift, which is a word that we use a lot at home. Um, yeah, it's but like how do you do shifting, it? shifting. And, you know, it takes, in my experience, first self observation, because you have to be able to say, okay, I'm, I'm looking at myself, I'm freaking out, there's a way up. And then you start training that way out. Either it is, you know, if it is with uh, memory, or some people hold things. I know sometimes I do like holding. I remember when I used to start struggle a lot with nervousness. I would tap, like I would tap my, okay. my leg a little bit. I'm like one, two, three, one, two, three, in order to just like get the the heart rate to go down, to mm -hmm. get the body to cool off a little bit. Just one, two, three. And my body just knew, okay, like when she does this, we need to relax, you know? It's just about having a two-way communication with the body because that's essentially what's going on, right? When we're afraid or when we're angry or when we're frustrated, all of those emotions have a different sensation in the body, like a physical sensation, right? Some people, when they get angry, they'll hear ringing in their ears, Yeah. right? That's, that's not bad. That's a cue. That's your body telling you like, hey, there's something going on inside that feels really bad. Can you do something about it? But if we train ourselves to notice the cues that the body's sending us, 
we catch them, like you said, you know, becoming self-aware, mm -hmm. becoming self-aware, like this is what's going on. This is probably why it's happening. Let me pause for a second. Exactly. And it's with all emotions. Sometimes it's the good stuff. Like sometimes we're really excited. And maybe when we get really excited, we don't think things through. So I exactly. like, notice, like, well, I'm really excited. I'm going to count to 10 before I answer. Instead of suppressing the emotion or, or running away from it, because I've done both. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all, we've all been like there yeah. somehow. Because if we don't, if we're not self aware, if we're not actually present, in that moment to evaluate where am I at, two things are gonna happen, right? The fight, flight, freeze response is gonna kick right. in, right? And that's just your brain making decisions for you on an automatic system, right? So like, okay, here's this thing, it feels uncomfortable, let me give it a negative meaning, and now I need to either, what do we do when we're mad? We either like blow up or we shut down, mm -hmm. right? So we fight or we flight, we run away. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural automatic reaction. But it's just because it's automatic doesn't mean that this is the way that it must be. It's not like who I am. Exactly. It's just a reaction that your body and your brain and your heart have been trained to go through. And that really inspires me. Um, and it's actually what inspired everything that is, you know, this fear-free experience, the art, the music, and the designs, is that that capacity to get out of that zone because for many years i thought i was like a victim of that space and it was just because i didn't have tools as simple as that yeah, but that's the mind shift there's only two ways to exist in the world you can be a victim to your circumstances or you can be the powerful person that is actually choosing your experience exactly now there's always going to be situations where we are victimized, where like anybody can look at it and be like, yes, you were victimized, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not to take that away from anybody because there are moments that are difficult. However, if we allow a victim label to remain in our minds, then we remain in that space also emotionally, mm -hmm. energetically, physically we have the results of a mindset that is that we are victims. And it's, a re it's, it's the hardest thing to yeah. shift. No, and it's, it's real, I think. And I can, I can speak also for like many immigrants that have gotten to this wonderful country, to the US, and we come from South America or places in Europe where we grew up with a lot of anxiety and a lot of uncertainty and volatility. And man, there is a shift. To, to make happen within yourself to break free from those. I would say it's not to take the, the importance out of it, but it's like imaginary fears because now you, you've changed your circumstances. Yeah. You're in a different space. Are you gonna keep being afraid of things that are just not there anymore? Well, unless you're consciously trying to make changes in your mind, you will continue to be afraid, right? That's how post-traumatic stress happens. You know, yeah. if you're in danger and something negative happens to you, your body learns, all right, like when something looks or smells like this, like we're just gonna release all of the self-defense mechanisms mm -hmm. because I already know what that looks like and I know how to get us through this to survive. Is that connected to the example of the tiger that I love? Because I do want to share kind that of, with everybody. That's like, Kind of, it's a through repetition, you know? Okay. Like I, you know, I coach a lot of people who sadly have gone through like some pretty severe trauma, right? And a lot of the responses to trauma, when it's like severe trauma, is to freeze. Basically, it's just like play possum, play dead, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of guilt associated with that. Okay. And then we internalize that, right? So the body learns, sorry, right, like, let's say there's some kind of assault and the assailant was a man. Like super common, right? So something like this, then the brain is like, okay, men are in this category inside my brain that means dangerous, watch out, you know, so whenever we come into contact with somebody new, then the body's gonna respond in an old way, mm -hmm. right? But if we don't become aware that this is an automatic response that is unconscious and we don't choose to change it, right? Then it just builds up. What happens is that the file in your head gets bigger because you're collecting more and more data. Exactly. And the brain's like, oh, here's this thing that looks familiar. 
Here's a response that I already learned will get me through it. Okay, file that away. Okay, here's another situation that looks familiar. Here's the same response. And then we have more and more data in our brain that says, well, you're right. Mm -hmm. Like, this type of person is dangerous, mm -hmm. right? So if we want to reverse that, we need to back up all the way to the very beginning. And this is like what you and I talked about the tiger, right? Exactly. Like, this is a really kind of like a weird concept, right? But everything in our experience is neutral. Okay. Now, we don't have the ability to process anything in our experience as neutral because that's just not how the brain works, right? <laughs> but from a, from a philosophical standpoint, right? Everything in the world is neutral, mm -hmm. right? But in order for the brain to be able to process the information so that you can understand it, it needs to categorize it. It has to label it. Okay. Because if you don't label it, then where's the file? Like it doesn't exist unless it's in my head, mm -hmm. right? So let's say there's a tiger. Like you and I are sitting here and we see there's a tiger walking down the street in Coconut Grove, right? So automatically our brains, like from a philosophical standpoint, it's, it's a tiger, period. Right? But that's not how it works. The brain's like, okay, is this good or bad? Let me give it meaning. Mm -hmm. Right? So the meaning that we're naturally going to go to is going to be, what in the world is the tiger doing here? Exactly. I'm in danger. Something has gone wrong. Right? So Welcome for your life. Well, that comes next. Like the first thing is going to be, give it meaning. This is weird. It's out of the ordinary. I'm in danger. Right? So if that is what's going on in the head. Your brain's like, I know what I'm in danger means. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my stress response. The stress response, we all learned this in high school, right? You're gonna fight, you're gonna flight and run away, or you're gonna freeze, right? You're gonna play dead. Which freeze we really don't go into unless it's like very severe stress, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So like literally if you're being like attacked by a bear, like freeze might be the best option, mm -hmm. right? So the brain decides, all right, this is negative. What am I physiologically? What am I, my physical body? What am I, how am I gonna respond, right? So there's a tiger, I mean, all right, we have a door here. So you and I might be like, pick up the phone, let's call someone and let's run out the back door. So we would choose flight. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's nothing here and there's no way out in the back, we don't really have an option to run, right? Now we're kind of cornered. So we can fight it and hope for the best. Right, like maybe it's missing a leg, I don't know. Like maybe we can overtake it. Um, or we can play dead. So those are the options, right? Now, if this was in the wild, like the beginning of time with humanity, right? Yeah. We go through this cycle. At some point there's a resolution. Right? Exactly. At some point either like you and I die because we got eaten, or maybe we win and we run away mm -hmm. and we're able to in that moment have a resolution, which is probably gonna look like you and I like bent over, like hyperventilating, and going, oh my god, I can't believe we just did that. We need to call everybody and tell them that we just survived, right? Exactly. So like, what are we gonna do? Like maybe you and I go down the street where like grab a meal because like we need to sit down and have a conversation. Exactly. Right? So we're gonna do things that are gonna send signals to the body that says I'm safe. Because if you and I are being chased by a tiger, we're not gonna be like, hold on, I'm gonna go ahead and like have a cocktail and then I'm gonna deal with you? No, exactly. we're gonna keep fighting or running away. So when we do something that is not dealing with the fight or the flight, we're telling the body everything's cool, like white black. Like we can go back mm -hmm. to homeostasis, right? Now in the Western world, we don't really do that, right? We go from neutral, negative meaning, response, neutral, negative. We, we don't really take the time close, to close the circle, to give the body a signal that says like, all right, like, good job, thank you for getting me through that. Now mm -hmm. let's, I don't know, go for a walk. Exactly. Or some signal that you're safe again. So the more that we do that, right, the more that we ignore the resolution, then the worse it gets. Because it becomes part of who we are. Absolutely. This is just how I am. Whenever I see this, I just this, I just don't like it. Like I get really angry at it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have a confrontation because confrontations are hard, so I just avoid them at all costs. And then no, you start generating everything that you didn't fully close or fully process. Right, it gets stored in the body. Yeah. Right? Because we forget, like the 
emotions, situations, thoughts are all temporary. Nothing is meant to remain here. Exactly. But we hold it because we don't we don't resolve it. We don't breathe through it. We hold on to emotions. We don't allow ourselves to cry, to scream, to do whatever is happening in that moment. Exactly. For the emotion. Or or to acknowledge that something a completed a cycle, whatever it feels like. I I learned that actually like working with you. Now I have a different conversation with myself where I'm like, okay, a stressful situation, um, I don't know, something happened, I managed, whatever happened, happened. And then I take a few minutes just to say, okay, it's over, like, complete, you can release. And I could actually feel it, like, I could feel my stomach still, like, you know, like, cramped or, or my legs shaking or, or my hands sweating. But you have to, like, bring it to resolution, and I just, I just learned that with you. Yeah. When we don't bring it to resolution, what do we actually do? Like, think about it from like a logical perspective. Like, let's say we go to the grocery store, right? And somebody is rude to us, right? Are we gonna let it go? Most of us are gonna be like, I can't believe that happened. And I'm gonna call my husband like, oh, you're not gonna be with this lady at a supermarket for me, right? And then when we hang out with her, we're gonna get home. We're gonna be like, Can you even like imagine like doing that to someone? So we're just gonna keep going and going and going with the story, right? What happens every time we do that? We activate the same sensations in the body. So they're like, okay, we're still fighting with this person. Like, what's exactly. happening? Where's the person? Like, right. who do I punch? Right. <laughs> so, you know, because you and I have talked about this. So there's a very predictable sequence of events, right? Like yes. First, we have a thought, then we have an emotion, then we have a behavior, and then we have a result. But if we keep going down the circle, like, we're not changing the result, right? So at some point, we need to change the thought. Like, ah, oh, that lady was probably in a really bad moment. Like, maybe her dog died this morning. Like, that's why she was cranky. And I don't know, my hair reminds her of her dog. Like, I have no idea. Because we don't know. Exactly. Those things happen. And we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Like, every time I get caught up, we go to Miami. So, driving to Miami is like, mm, right? Whenever I get caught up, I'm like, I go to Cito. His wife's in labor. He's in a hurry. Let him go. <laughs> That's the story that I tell myself over and over. Yeah. Because if not, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, I hate driving to Miami. It's so bad. And the people, and nobody was like, why? So at the end of the day, and this is why I love what Patti does and why I love creating to inspire your power, the whole purpose of it is that we have, we are surrounded by tools, and in my case, like, art and entertainment that, <laughs> that is attuned to those tools, to, to truly live fulfilled, and live, living fulfilled doesn't mean like, I am happy all the time, no, there's going to be a little bit of every emotion, different experiences, but as long as you're truly present, you're here, you're enjoying who you are despite of the circumstances, I mean, that is, to me, that's truly living a joyful life. Yeah, I define it very much the same way. Like, to me, living a fulfilling life is a life of presence and personal responsibility. Exactly. Like, I take full accountability for everything that's going on in my life. That way I can't blame anybody. And you have the power to, to, to shift it because that's, if not, I, I mean, that's why I think like a lot of us and a lot of actually like, none of us, like countries, cities, places, oh God, yeah. have help. been like, like, haven't evolved as fast or as smoothly because of the not taking responsibility. Like, it's, uh, it's, it's truly life changing. So, Patti, if we were to summarize, just like in very simple tools um, or steps mm -hmm. to process fear, how would you say that we can do that? Um, well, I would tell you, this is the first assignment I give to everybody, like day one, right? Get a sheet of paper or maybe do it in the notes app on your phone. And any time, do this for like 10 days, challenge yourself, right? So any time you feel a communication from the body, right? Okay. So whenever you feel like an emotion is being activated, so maybe you'll notice that if you're driving and you're getting frustrated, like you'll grip the steering wheel a little bit tighter, mm -hmm. right? So take that, okay, like here, my body's trying to communicate something. And in that moment, try to label that emotion, Okay. right? Try to stay away from big words like anxiety because what's anxiety, mm -hmm. right? Anxiety is typically worry or frustration, right? So try to be super duper specific okay. about what's the name of this motion. Write it down. You're like an accountant, okay? We're not getting mad at ourselves for whatever we've discovered. It's just write stuff down for 10 days. What am I feeling? 
And what am I feeling in the body? Okay, I feel angry. Mm -hmm. And I feel it here in my chest. It's a little bit hot. And maybe I feel a little bit of tingling, I don't know, on my lips. So write it down. It's hot, it's in my chest, and I feel it in my lips. Awesome. Now we know what the physical body is doing, and we know what the emotional body is doing. And then challenge yourself to go one step further. This is the harder part, right? So go back in time. What was I thinking about when I felt that emotion, right? So there's a difference between an event and a thought. Okay. Right? So if you say something to me that, that I don't like, right? Maybe in that moment I feel, let's say I feel embarrassed, okay? I feel embarrassed and I feel it in my neck. Okay, so I know I feel flush in my neck and I feel embarrassed. Awesome. So the thought would be, ow, oh, I didn't like the way she said that. Does she not like me? Mm -hmm. Not, Rock said something to me that I didn't like. That's an event, right? That's you describe exactly. the event. The thought is super specific to the language that's in your head. Oh, I wonder if she doesn't like me. Right? Like that's that would be the language. I'm laughing because that exercise is powerful. Like after ten it's days you're like, oh I, these are the things that I tell myself and Right, so but then you start noticing like, wow, like none of that's real. Yeah. You know, which is the, the thing part is that the minute that you pay attention to the emotion, that's really all the body wants. That's it. It's like a kid who's like, I want a cookie, I want a cookie, I want a cookie, I want a cookie, I want a cookie. Mm -hmm. The minute that you turn around and you pay attention to the kid, the kid stops talking, right? Uh, and either you give him a cookie or you don't give him a cookie and have a conversation. But the, 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 the stops. Okay. So the minute you turn around, you're like, oh, okay, I feel it. Like, I know I feel hot. I know that this is this. I know I'm thinking it because of that. The body's like, oh, okay, she's paying attention. And it's just like, so is that. But notice. She's acknowledging me. It's fun when you actually like take a look at what's going on yeah. without judgment. That's key, right? Because you don't want to add judgment to. Exactly. I can't believe I'm feeling like this again. And how long am I going to feel like this? You know, because then we're just adding more thoughts to it. Mm -hmm. Just 10 days, like an accountant. Write it down. Comment below what happened after those 10 days, <laughs> please. So we can invite Patty again and continue doing this amazing things because it's really, really valuable, Patty. It's really changed my life, and I know that you've helped many people change their own lives. Yeah, I'm so happy that you're not only inviting me, but you actually did the work, you know? Because yes. it does change, and it changes like that. It yes. doesn't need to change in 10 years of work. No, no, no. It's, it's just like... You can take your life in two weeks. Yes. Seriously. It only takes... Uh, I would say the commitment and the and the, the love for your own life, like you really have to want to do it. I mean, oh, it's a personal responsibility. Absolutely. Like, do I want to take charge of this? Absolutely. And if the answer is yes, do the exercise. Comment below. Let us know which ones were the hard ones. Sometimes, yes. sometimes it's difficult in the beginning. Like, don't be surprised if you're like, oh, I feel angry, but I don't know where I feel it. That's totally normal. Absolutely. Just paying attention. Don't give up. Just keep going, and you'll see. Just noticing is like eighty percent of that. And if you have comments or questions, where can they find you, Patty? You can find me on my Instagram or on my website. It's at pattyfonsalida.com. You're going to have the blog well, yes. at pattyfonsalida or coralgiebosimnosis.com. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you all for being here today at Rox TV, this fully bilingual channel to inspire your power. I'm your host, Roxana Frontini, or you can just simply call me Rox, and I'll see you back here soon. Thank you.